Hello, in this video we're going to use the new simulation nodes in Geometry Nodes in Blender to create our own particles like this. If you're new here, this is already the fourth video I'm making on simulation nodes. You can find the links to the previous videos down below. Now let's jump right in and make us some particles. Here I am back in Blender 3.5 Alpha. This is the experimental build with the uh, simulation nodes built in. So let's go right to Geometry Nodes, create a new node tree. I'm going to plug in right away our simulation input and the simulation output. And then we're going to create a mesh primitive. Where is it? Grid. Because that's what's going to emit uh, our particles. Now let's distribute some points onto the faces. So we have points. Maybe turn down the density. Um, Right, so these are the points. If I hit spacebar, play, that's all we get. Nothing fancy happening yet. So the first thing we want to do is we want to move these particles. Maybe we want to drop them down. We know we can do that with a set position node. And on each iteration of our simulation, so on each frame, we want to move the particles down, maybe 0 0.2. So if I hit play, Okay, now we have all of these particles that we got at the on the first frame are not just falling down. Not very spectacular. How can we spawn new particles? So on each frame, we want to spawn new particles uh, on our plane. Remember in one of the previous videos, we created, we extruded a vertex and created new mesh on each iteration. The same thing we have to do here. We can simply plug in a join, join, join geom geometry node. And instead of plugging this into our simulation here, we distribute points on our mesh on each iteration. So on each new frame, we create new points on our grid and we add those to the points that we had from the previous frame. So what happens if we play now? Yes, cool. We're spawning new points and we're moving the existing points down. Not very spectacular still <laughs> because we keep using the same distribution of points. If we look at it from the top, they're all in the same spot because we have to change our seed value. We can just plug in the scene time frame, for example. Now let's go back to frame one, hit play. Yes, now we have a random distribution on our grid. Now they're all they all have the same speed and they are not speeding up. Like there's no gravity force pulling them and making them go faster. Okay, how do we make the particles speed up over time? Well, first of all, let's give every particle a speed information. We can do that simply by plugging in a store named attribute. We want a vector on each point. We call it V for velocity. And that V is should be negative something, right? And then over here where we set the position, we use that. So we use the named attribute V. And now all we need to do is we take this V and we subtract a tiny little number. So vector math subtract like 0 0.01 and we're also going to use that v in here so what what's happening here on each particle we're setting a variable called v which is a vector and we're using the v from the last frame but we're subtracting from that a little tiny number so if if, if v is I don't know, zero on the first frame. On the second frame, it's negative 0 0.01. We store that on our particle again, and on the next frame, we subtract a little more. So this, the speed constantly increases. Let's see if that works. Yes, they're speeding up. You can see these on top here, these are moving much slower than the ones down here. Cool. Now we run into another little problem. Once they reach a certain speed, we can see that we're always spawning them on our plane. And on each frame, they move down a certain step, right? There's no nothing in between. It's only on frames. 
And once they move at a very high speed, we can actually see those frames. So one way to solve this is not to use a fixed value here, but maybe some random value a vector, something between 0 and 0 0.003 maybe. Okay, so we're, we're gonna uh, randomize the amount of speed increase that each particle gets. And now this looks much nicer. It's much more random and we don't get these horizontal lines. Now, another thing, currently we're increasing our speed basically to infinity. But uh, we know that in physics, we have something called terminal velocity, which is the highest speed that the particle will ever fall due to like air resistance. So gravity is pulling, the air is pushing the particle if it's a raindrop, for example. So it will never go faster than its terminal velocity. Uh, can we simulate this? Yeah, of course we can. We just have to limit the, this speed increase here. Well, we can just do that with a vector math node. We set that to maximum. Where is it? Here. So we take the greater one. Basically, this gives me a limit, for example, negative 0.3. And by taking the maximum, so th if this inc increases and it's cre increasing downwards, because we're going uh, negative on the z-axis, um, if this is like negative 0.4, the greater one of negative 0.4 and negative 0.3 would be 0.3. So essentially, we're never going to be faster than negative 0.3. And really, this is what we want to plug in here now. Drag this over here, maybe. OK, so now we have some terminal velocity. Let's see if it looks cool. Save, shift, left cursor to go to frame one, spacebar. Okay, they're falling, they're falling. And then they stay at this speed. Yeah, cool. Awesome. Now, of course, these are just some, <laughs> just some random numbers. Uh, we could go negative 0.2 maybe to reach terminal velocity sooner. Yep, that's it. By the way, my name is Chris and I make free educational tutorials here on YouTube. If you like what you see so far, please give the video a thumbs up and you can support me and my channel on Patreon, where you can download all the finished blend files of all the tutorials and of course, by subscribing right here for free on YouTube. And then that is done. So this is our gravity simulation. We could take those, put them in a frame, call the frame gravity. And we're done with that. Cool. Now, what else do we want in our particle simulation? Of course, particles should have some sort of age, right? So we could visualize them like when they're born. Think of ambers when they're, when they're emitted from fire. When they're born, they're like bright white and then yellow, orange, red. And as they die off, they basically fade away to black. So we could simulate that by adding an age attribute. So in front here, let's just copy this, store another named attribute, let's call it age. This time we don't want a vector, we want an integer because we're working with frames. So we need to take the named attribute from the previous frame called age. And we take a math node, uh, utilities, math, and we add one to that. And in our, this node, and in our um, spreadsheet over here, we should see we have age zero. Let's go back to frame one. Okay, so on frame one, age is one. Now let me just play this real quick and stop it. So you can see all the way down here, like the very new particles, the ones that are just born have age one, then these have age two, three, and the oldest particles all the way up here, these are the ones that have that were born on frame one, now have an age of 24 because we're on frame 24. Neat, so already our particle system has some very valuable information in it. Let's frame these up and call that H. Okay, N 
Now you might be thinking, hold on a second, we're using a named attribute from the previous frame that we never originally set on, on our uh, newborn particles, right? That is true. Uh, essentially, you would, if, now if you wanted to make this really clean, you would store the age with a value of zero maybe in here. But we don't need this because um, uh, geometry nodes just, if you use a named attribute for the first time and you say it's an integer, it's just zero. And same down here, the vector that we're using here, v, that we're reusing from the previous frame and it wasn't ever set on a previous frame, if we're on frame one, then v is just e vector zero, zero, zero. So this works beautifully. Okay, now what can we do with our age? Well, we could make particles die after a certain age. Right now, they live forever and we're creating thousands of particles. So let's make them die off. Simple thing really inside of our uh, simulation loop here. We just go, hey, if you're too old, <laughs> then uh, we just delete you. So we put in a delete geometry node, delete geometry node, and which geometry, which point do we want to delete? Well, we can plug in a selection. Uh, we know we have our named attribute, which is called age. And if age, um, what is man, utilities, math, if age is greater than, I don't know, 75, then we delete that particle. Okay, so here we have particles and here they're dying. So they're not just falling down. We're not creating unlimited amounts of geometry or points in this case. We're actually killing off our particles. The last thing I want to do now is to um, use this age information inside of a shader. So let's plug a material in here. Shading, let's go to shading. Bring this up, switch this over to an emission shader. Plug in our attribute, which is a factor. So we use the age, we plug that into a converter color ramp. And when they age, when they're brand new, we want them to be bright white. And then we add some points here. Let's make this one like a bright yellow. Then this one we make orange. This one we make red. And then when they die off, they should be black. So this is our progression over the lifespan of a particle. But our age is a value between zero and 75 because that's when we kill them off, right? And this expects a value between zero and one. So all we need to do here is put in a math node, divide our age by 75, essentially giving us a value between zero and one, zero being born, one being very old, and let's see if it works. So let's go back to geometry nodes. Let's plug in a material set material node, set this material. And if we go to rendered view, we should see some color. And that is because we're in EV and EV doesn't render points. Let's switch over to cycles. And yes, we have color. So the brand new born particles are white. And then as they age, they get darker. Okay, why does this work in cycles? Well, cycles can render points and it renders points as perfect spheres. So you can keep zooming in here. These spheres have no, no resolution. They are perfect spheres. This only works in cycles and the size of the sphere is the size of the point. So you can, uh, inside of geometry nodes, you can define the size of a point. However, in EV, this does not work. It doesn't render points. In EV, if you want to render in EV, you just have to instance like an icosphere on each point, and then you can give that a color. And if you do that, you have to switch the, the node in here to use instancer for the attribute source on the shader. All right, so let's go back. 
Let's make our background black and look at this once more. Hit spacebar and here we have some very nice looking particles. In the next video, we're going to add some simple collision detection to this whole thing. And we're going to do that all inside of Geometry Nodes. So make sure right now that you are subscribed to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up if you learned something new today. The finished file of this tutorial is of course available on my Patreon. Thank you for watching. See you soon.